back to Gracie Meats. We have all heard about airplane pilots, but do you know the people that keep the plane safe and tell the pilots where to go? I was lucky enough to live with a person that does this, but most people don't know about this unique career. What is this profession you may be asking? Why, it's an air traffic controller. To help make this job a bit more mainstream, I invited Mr. Adam Guerrero onto the show. Why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself? Well, my name's Adam Guerrero. I am an air traffic controller at Southern California TRACON. Uh, TRACON stands for Terminal Radar Approach Control. I have been doing this for see, since 2003, so 17 years now. I did four in the Air Force and you know, the other 13 here in, in the FAA. Did you have any influences that made you choose this career? Yes, actually, um, a friend of mine from high school, his dad was a Delta pilot, and I was really uh, interested in becoming an, a pilot for an airline when I was younger in high school. And when we talked about it, he had told me something about air traffic control, and I asked what was that. And he, you know, pretty much told me, he's like, well, it's pretty much the language um, barrier for some of us, you know, or not, not, ba- not barriers, but the language between pilots and controllers when they talk to each other as, as they're flying. So I dug into it a little bit more for air traffic control. He told me, if you understand air traffic control, it'd be a lot easier to become a pilot. And that's kind of where it took me into this job, air traffic control. And that's where I went into the Air Force under that job. What part of your job do you think is the most challenging? I would have to say training. Uh, training for this job is is challenging because it's almost like uh, learning a whole new language. You're talking in numbers and acronyms constantly and getting everything to be able to pretty much say at a moment's notice is nerve-wracking at times because of the huge responsibility that you have with each and every aircraft that's in the air. But it's it's fun. It's it's a lot of fun, but it is it is very challenging throughout the whole training process. That that's got to be it for me. So do you have to have like fast like thinking and reflexes for this job? Uh, that comes with time in the training. That's what makes it a, a really cool job. It, that's that you don't have to have all book smarts for this job. Although you do obviously need to study very hard. But it, there's there's some common sense in there that you know you can balance out with it. That makes it fun. That makes it challenging, but you know rewarding at the same time. When did you decide this career was the one that you wanted to stay in or do? When I joined the Air Force and I got into air traffic control, I didn't I had nothing really to. I didn't know what to expect completely when I got into it. And joining the ranks, you know, at the bottom of the barrel, so to speak, being an airman basic there, and then basically all the higher ups, you know, officers, they have to tell you what to do, all that kind of stuff in the higher of the military. And then after going through all the training and I get to my first base, they were like, well, every pilot out there is an officer and you get to tell them what to do. And it was kind of cool at that time, you know, like, hey, I get to tell officers what to do while I'm still in the military. So that was like one of the little pinning points, you know, when I was younger that like, this is really cool. I get to tell these guys what to do. But it also shows like how much responsibility that you have. And it just it's something that I was really proud of to be able to do. So that when I got into air traffic control, having all that responsibility to me was cool in itself to to make me want to continue to do this job for the rest of my career. With great power be, uh, gets great responsibility or whatever the quote is from <laughs> exactly. Spider-Man or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, you kind of touched on this in question two about your biggest influence, but why would a teenager want to go into this career in the future? Because it's something challenging. It's something different. Every single day, there's something new. The responsibility, you kind of grow up a lot really quickly, um, knowing that you have other people's lives in your hands. After I got out of the Air Force, I worked at LAX. And to see as many planes come in and out of, the, out of there every single day, and every single plane having more than 100 people on each and every single plane that you're talking to, for the most part, It's just, it's surreal in the moment um, when you first get there. And just interesting, very, very interesting every single day that there's something different that can, that can go either good or wrong, that you have the ability to make, make right before it becomes something disastrous. So it's, it's, 
very, very interesting every single day. Not every single day is the same. But, you know, as a teenager, it's just it's just a really cool job. Just if you're into aviation and planes in general, it's a really cool Is there, like, a school that you need to go to to become an air traffic controller? Or is it just, like, training? There are schools uh, across the United States that I know that some people have gone through. I went the military route. Uh, all my training came through the United States Air Force. Um, I know there's schools, uh, one out here in California called uh, Mount San Antonio College. There's also Embry-Riddle uh, University in North Dakota, I believe is one, UND. And then there's another one somewhere in the Northeast that I do not know of, or I'm not very familiar with. But there's a few schools out there to get the training, but my specific rack background is uh, military so what did the training kind of entail like what was it like because you said it was difficult the difficult part was understanding um the acronyms you know understanding what they are and you know the pressures of the military and you know making sure that you make it all the way through because once if you can't make it through there it's like you have to get retrained into a new job and this is really what I the only thing I really wanted to do when I got in here so I could become a pilot so it was a it was just a self pressure on myself to make sure that I made it through I think that's what made it a little bit more difficult but in the end I was able to complete it and get going with my, the rest of my training why do you think this job isn't normal it's not normal in the sense that it's not a 9 to 5 job where you just, you go in, you have like a normal office. There's different aspects of air traffic control. The hours are different depending on where you work. Um, I've worked at 24-hour facilities all my career. So the hours of operation for us to be there every week, it's uh, different hours. It changes constantly. But uh, a few other things that are not normal, uh, just the situations that happen every single day, or once in a while, I should say, not every day, but once in a while you get like emergencies. You hear of an aircraft that, might have an engine out and everybody within your team that you work with, supervisors to other controllers, everybody that's in that area, all help you out in a team fashion to be able to get that airplane back onto the ground. So it's very unique in that aspect of it still can be like a, a team that's helping you out, not an individual, not an individual performance, so to speak. Everybody's there to help each other out to make sure every plane is safe in the skies. Yeah, and you mentioned that your office like you don't go to an office whenever you go to work so what kind of, like what does it look like well to me coming out of high school an office was a cubicle sat at a desk you know that was in my mind what an office was my first uh i worked in the towers that was the way i went uh, the route that i went i told you there's three aspects of air traffic control the tower route is at the top of a, a tower uh, <laughs> And it's got glass all the way around, 360 view. And you're looking at the airplanes as they land and as they take off from the airport. So you get to see, you know, the surrounding areas uh, pretty well. It's a great view from the tower. Second aspect of air traffic control is going to be the terminal where I work at. It's called Terminal Radar Approach Control. And that is where you're going to be looking on a scope, um, kind of like those old movies where, well, the technology is a lot better now, but those old movies where you see the, uh, the sweeping around and then the little blips on there. It was, it's something like that. It's gotten a lot better. It's more digitized now. And that's the second uh, aspect where we take care of anything that's coming into the airport. And then we let them go from 10 miles out. We hand them over to the tower and vice versa. When the tower has them departing and they, they take off, we also um, receive them and we start talking to the pilot. Once you're just off the ground, about a thousand feet in the air, and then we start taking you up to higher altitudes. We'll take you, maneuver you guys between other aircraft until you get to a cruising altitude, and we'll give you guys over to the third aspect of air traffic control, which is the center. And the center handles everything in high altitude from uh, 17,000 feet and above, in my area particularly. And they take care of a lot of high altitude all across the country. And some areas uh, across the country where it's not as compact, with the air traffic demand, they can also work everything uh, all the way down almost to the ground except for the tower stuff, of course. But they can do some of our job as well. That's a lot. <laughs> right. So, but with, as far as uh, the three different aspects, you only get qualified in, in one of them. So if you're an air traffic controller at a tower, you'll be at that tower until you're done. Or you can be at a TRACON until you're done being certified. And if you'd like to move around, you can you can request to do that stuff as well. So we talked a little bit about like what a person would need 
to become an air traffic controller. So, but what kind of person do you think would excel in this career? Anybody really. And I, I like that about my job is that we have people who have uh, bachelor's and master's degrees in different areas, but we also have people in a sense like myself who just came straight out of high school with training through the military. If you start at a smaller facility and move your way up, you can, you can pretty much do anything with the right training. This job is so versatile that, like I said, you don't need, you don't need the bachelor's degree. You don't need the master's degree, but it helps for some people. It does help for the structure because it is structured for the most part, but you also have to have that, you have to have that capability to think outside the box. Um, you'll get stuck in a situation to where the outside of the, you know, outside the box thinking really helps you. And that's where you can excel the most in this job. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. All right. Thank you, Gracie. Mr. Adam gave a lot of great information about this career that I didn't even know. This job definitely isn't for the faint of heart, because you have to think on your toes while many, many lives are in your hands. No normal person could be focused and motivated enough to go through the intense training and be able to work strange hours. But then again, show me a normal teenager. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you like Gracie Meets, subscribe so you can listen every time a new episode is dropped. And follow Gracie Meets on Instagram at Gracie.meets. Tune in next Saturday for a thoughtful interview with a web developer.